Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Ishin E010S Pro Micro Brushed Quadcopter. This is the upgraded version of the Ishin E010S which has very similar features but now the Pro version features an OSD and in addition it has a very interesting canopy. This quadcopter is available in three versions. You can either get it with an Sky, DSM2 or a FlySky receiver. I've got the Sky version and by the way the receiver is built in in the flight controller so make sure to choose the correct one. Inside this box, we get in the instructions manual, the quadcopter, which as I told you, has a very interesting canopy. This bag of accessories, which contains one set of spare propellers, a double-sided sticky pad to mount the camera, two rubber bands, a propeller extractor tool, and a USB charger. Along with the quadcopter, we also get in one LiPo battery. This is the same LiPo battery that was included with the Ishin E010S, which is a 1S 240mAh 45C battery with a JSD connector. This quadcopter features Racer Star 615 59,000kV motors. I recommend to get a couple of spare motors because they're easy to replace, they're cheap, and also the lifespan of a brushed quadcopter is pretty limited. In addition, we can find an only one 800 TV line, 40 channels, 25 milliwatt camera. The propellers are 31 millimeters propellers. And finally, on the bottom, we can find this Lemon F3 flight controller, which features a built-in Sky receiver and also an OSD. The weight of the quadcopter without the battery is 21.7 grams. And after adding the included battery, the weight is 28.9 grams. After testing the quadcopter with the provided connector and battery, I'm going to replace the connector into a 2mm connector and then I'm going to test it with this battery. I think it's going to shave off some weight and also maybe the quadcopter is going to perform better. Accessing the bind button can be done without removing the canopy. The button is exposed and you can use a tweezer in order to reach it. However, you will need to remove the canopy in order to set up the VTX. So now I'm going to quickly remove it. You can see that the camera is glued, so be careful when removing it. And that's why they also included a couple of more sticky pads on the accessory bag, so you can change them. In addition, we can see that we have here the micro USB port, so you're going to need to remove the canopy anyway. It's pretty inconvenient because normally you would expect the micro USB port is going to face the bottom, but they chose to put it on top. Not so clever design, however, you're not going to need to configure this quadcopter often and removing the canopy is not such a big deal. In order to configure the VTX, you will need to press the button on the side of it. Short pressing it is going to switch between the channels. On the button, we can find eight LED indicators. The left one is one, then the right one is eight. Long pressing this button is going to change the band. Each time the band is changed, the channel changed to one. So first configure the band, then set the channel. The left LED indicator indicates A, then B, then E, F and R. And you can refer to the instructions manual, which contains the frequency channel, and then just match your favorite band and channel in order to set the frequency. Binding the FR Sky version is done on the following manner. First of all, set your transmitter to mode D8, channels 1 to 8. Power on the quadcopter. Unlike other receivers, you don't have to press the bind button while powering on the quadcopter. The binding procedure is done on a very similar way to the Racer Star Crazy B board, which I've already reviewed. So what you need to do, plug the battery. Then you can see the LEDs on the bottom are flashing. Press the bind button for three seconds until the LED is going to turn solid. Now you can see that the blue LED indicator is solid. Hit bind on your remote controller. And you can see that now the blue LED indicator is flashing, which means that now the receiver is bound. Next thing you need to do is just to hit exit, disconnect the battery, telemetry lost. And after connecting the battery, you can see we get in telemetry, the RSSI is displayed on a remote controller, which is also a very nice feature. After setting up the VTX to 5860, the next thing I'm going to do is to go over a bit of flight configuration. Then I'm going to take it for a test flight. I'm going to change the battery connectors into a two millimeters connector and see how it performs as well. And I'll see you in the end of this video in order to give you my conclusion.
So overall, I think that the Ishin E010S Pro offers a great value for money. It's easy to set up, fun to fly, it features OSD and RSSI, and in addition, I crashed it a few times and it's still intact, so I think it's also pretty durable. In terms of range, I could get to about 100 meters and then I lost the RF signal a couple of times. And the VTX is actually pretty great and even though it's only 25 millibar, I was limited by the radio receiver and not by the VTX. In terms of flight time, I could get about 2 minutes of flight time, both when using the stock battery and also after changing the connector to the 2mm power whoop connector. What I can tell you is that after changing the connector to the power whoop connector, the quadcopter felt more agile and it was easier to perform flips and rolls and I think that you should definitely give it a try if you are getting this quadcopter. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this quadcopter, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.